Okay, so we're going to talk about this uh, Panic Robot Pendant a little bit further. And we talked about jogging before. If you haven't watched that video, please go back and watch that video before you watch this one. Um, now, the main thing I'm going to talk about here is going to be the exact same thing, jogging. However, I want you to notice this. We're going to go down to Coordinate, uh, and we're going to go there. And we can choose right here, we can choose whether we want to be user, joint, we want to be world. Um, I'm going to explain in this video what world is. Okay, so what world does is it makes the whole robot work together, every single axis work together in conjunction. So what that's going to do is it's going to be the just as the coordinate show right here, x, y, and z. Right. So z would be up and down, and then y would be left and right, and then x would be forward and reverse. Watch. So what we're going to do, now we have it, and we have currently, let's change it to about 20% uh, speed, and we're going to go ahead and move into a negative X. So that's going to move the robot back, and it, or it's going to move the robot forward, I'm sorry, in this direction. Um, so you can see all the axes are working together of the, of the robot right now in conjunction with this move, and you can see all those because we have it in world mode, right? So again, you can get it. What we what we did before was prior. We we uh, did the joint move, right? So we were moving the joint. Um, in this case, we're moving the world mechanism. So let's go left and right. Um, so the Y again. So think about this as in they have a, a right hand um, finger mechanism, basically a right hand. Uh, scenario if you th ever thought about robotics it's it's basically x y and z uh, so if you hold your right hand if you're looking directly at the robot and it's actually mounted it's uh, flat on the ground it's not mounted upside down it is x y and z if it's mounted upside down then you flip your hand that's as simple as that I've seen them I've seen Fanic robots mounted upside down that's the reason I say that so again this is moving left and right you can see that the base is moving uh, but again, that's moving every single one of these axes to make sure that point of contact is actually there. So you see that did move that direction, right? So that's keeping that in mind. This is just moving. It's moving all the axes and keeping the robot itself, the base, the whole robot acts as a base. And that's what that's uh, using is the X, Y, and Z movement. Now let's see what Z does. And again, that's the up and down motion. So negative Z is actually bringing this all the way down. You can see that the, the robot has no need to move any other axes right now besides, and, and when it does, it starts doing so. You see that? So you see that it actually involved um, the second axis or second joint and the third joint be doing everything it's supposed to. And then also the, uh, the fifth and sixth joint right there. So let's bring that back up. So we're going to take the Z all the way back up. And again, this is explaining uh, using or jogging the Fanic robot with the pendant in world mode. Now, again, that's easily changeable with the coordinates uh, right here. You can go to coordinate and then I'm back in tool mode. If I wanted to actually move the robot one direction, uh, let's, let's speed that up just a little bit. So if I wanted to move the robot in the uh, joint like we did before, then this is just basically going to move axis one, right? This is not, not going to move any other axis. But however, if I wanted to go back and go into uh, world, which I'm going to do right here, this is world. If I wanted to do that, then I can go back and this will start moving the, a completely different methodology, right? So now we're not just thinking about x um, x is no longer going to be joint one it's going to be moving the whole unit forward and backwards right so just like i showed you forward and backwards so just keep that in mind this is how to jog in world mode um, and this is just how simple that is and keep in mind always when you're dealing with robotics safety is the number one key to robotics uh, you're going to be holding this handheld pendant and you're going to be uh, making sure the dead man switch is in the proper uh, proper uh, between the two limit switches are, I, I would say um, now again when it comes down to it um, just holding the shift key 
and then moving that is basically all it takes, right? Now, uh, again, when it comes down to this, uh, this is basically, and I put an end effector on there so you can actually see it this time, uh, but just to kind of show you, this is the end effector. Let's speed that up just a little bit so you can actually see that coordinated motion right there. And you can see how that works, right? So you see the coordinated motion behind that. And let's go ahead and go up and down again, just so you can see that one more time. And again, this is not using, so just to clarify this, if I put this in tool mode, or if I put this in joint, so if I go to joint right now, and I actually did X again, it's only gonna do that one thing. You see how that, that uh, end effector is no longer in a point where it's actually stable, or it's at, at a point where it's actually level. When, so if you're, you're, there's two different ways to actually, you know, you jog these things. So if you actually want to jog it and you wanted to do everything together, then, and you wanted to actually move everything up and down and keep everything together, um, then keeping it stable, then you would use it just like this, right? So this is very uh, easy to understand. So even if I went that high into that extreme, you can kind of see that spectrum of how it would react, right? And let's move this back and forth. Um, let's move it again in and out. And you can see the way that works in, jo in the world mode of jogging. So hopefully that was helpful. And again, I, I teach these videos to help everybody educate themselves and to help grow the industry. As you know, I've said it many times, we are in desperate need of automation techs as the industry moves to 4.0 and all the engineers are start working on more data driven things and we are in desperate need of having automation techs now that job title could be quite di quite different in different atmospheres however but when it comes down to it you need to learn how to do plc programming how to troubleshoot plcs how to understand the logic behind them of of reading the logic behind somebody that's written it before you and also robotics when it comes to that and integration of robotics how to use robotics so this is re the reason why by i'm actually taking the stance of actually teaching this more and more so with all that said hopefully you learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one